Welcome to Lissertainment, the channel with the most misleading name in all of YouTube. On today's video, we'll be seeing what happens when fighters' corners decide to invade the ring and get involved in the action. They don't end up solving anything or changing the result at all. So I don't know why they do it, but it sure is fun to watch for all the fans. Even some of them end up getting involved. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. Also, make sure to turn on those notifications. Let's get started. So we all saw how Teofimo Lopez was able to beat Vasily Lomachenko this past weekend to become the youngest boxer to ever hold four belts at the same time. That is a great accomplishment, but sometimes he can be a real douchebag when he celebrates his wins, like when he fought against Diego Magdaleno back in 2019. Red nose is bloodied. That one. Hey! Backflip to celebrate, but get Magdaleno. Apparently, Lopez said that it wasn't personal, but when they asked him about his celebration, he was quick to point out that Magdaleno's team had said bad things about him and made it personal themselves. So, this kind of proves that it was personal on both sides, and that's why this reaction happened. And let me tell you, Jesse Magdaleno, the brother, the pro boxer, is being restrained from coming after Lopez right now. The first guy that jumped in is Jesse Magdaleno, who is Diego's brother and is also a professional boxer, and he really wanted to go after Lopez. Undefeated, and now the unified NABF, NABA, and USBA lightweight champion. Then another member from Magdaleno's team started going after Lopez while he and Magdaleno were showing respect to each other after the fight. But luckily, he was pulled back. Pretty sure Lopez could beat the whole team at the same time. In 1998, Roger Mayweather was a super lightweight champion and he was taking on Vinny Pazienza. Mayweather started slow, but once he picked it up, he was able to get a one-sided victory, even dropping Vinny in the 11th round. Nice show, bro. Inside out. Bam. Sit down, boy. After the fight was over and the bell rang, Vinny kept throwing some punches and Mayweather responded doing the same. Well, this is when Lou Duba, Paciencia's trainer, jumped in into the ring and went after Mayweather. Look at Lou Duba, Vinny's coach. He takes a little two-piece. Bam, Roger ain't playing. Ding, ding, you can get it too. Duva actually got punched twice in the little skirmish, which resulted in him getting cut. Duva, even after receiving those hits, wouldn't stay down. He almost had to get wrestled away by his entire team. While Pazienza is just holding back Mayweather. Duva got suspended for this stupid reaction, but he did state at one point in 1980 that he felt every punch his boxer took, and this kind of proves that fact. But if your fighter can't beat the other guy, you have no chance. Now we head to a kickboxing fight between Merthyr Gronhart and Harut Gregorian that took place in 2017. In the second round, Gregorian turned his back to Gronhart for some unknown reason, which led to the series of events. Grunhart or Gregorian, and it was Grunhart who won round one, according to all five judges. Oh my! Defend yourself at all times! People were in complete shock after this knockout, and people were mad, thinking that it was a cheap shot. But the fighter failed to protect himself when the fight was still going on. His trainer later said that he turned around because of a cut and that he shouldn't have done it and doesn't blame Gronhart for hitting him, but others in the crowd did. So these two people aren't actually part of Gregorian's corner. They are actually fans and apparently hardcore fans because they jumped in there to put a beating on the winner. The guy in white breaking up the fight is actually Gregorian's trainer. So even he obviously thinks that these guys are complete morons. Hopefully they get put in jail because they obviously don't understand the rules of pro fighting. I tried to find out who these fighters are, but I wasn't able to get the information. So if you guys know, let me know. But anyway, the black guy was able to knock out his opponent. But as you soon see, you don't have to go to Paris to find idiots in the crowd. While he was trying to head over there to check on him and show his respect, the referee held him back. But then suddenly, a stranger jumped into the ring. With supporters like this, who needs enemies? 
the guy is a fan of the guy that lost and was able to land one shot on the guy's back before the referee and the entire corner for the loser jumped on him and almost beat him up. Even the guy who lost almost seemed like he wanted to punch him. It's amazing to see that even though this guy lost the fight, he still recognizes that the other guy shouldn't be attacked because he won the fight legitimately. This fight was the first one to ever be held at the Sydney Opera House and obviously because it's on this list, it was also the last fight to be held there. This was the fight in 1982 between Ken Salisbury and Alex Timelkov. Oh, that was a good left hook that really shook up Salisbury just for a moment. And now... Toward the end of the ninth round, Timelkov tried to finish Salisbury, but he landed two illegal blows, which caused Salisbury's corner to jump in. That's gone a bit wild, and Bernie Hall has actually pulled him. Oh, here's a, a real go. You won't see this. The guy flying is from Timelkov's corner trying to land a flying kick but he probably realized that if he goes over the ropes, he's going to fall down six feet. So he just crashed into them. Then Timelkov went after Salisbury. One of the corner men, the fight's still going, and one of the corner men from Timelkov's corner, Chucky Raymond, the referee, is trying to stop it. The uh, corner man's down. Chucky Raymond is now fighting. Yep, even the referee got involved, and luckily he was an ex-boxer, so he did pretty well for himself. Eventually, they managed to break up the fight, and the referee declared Salisbury the winner after disqualifying Tomelkov. He could have disqualified Salisbury since his corner got involved first, but he probably did it out of spite since he actually only fought against the other corner, or maybe it was illegal blows. Who knows? Crazy stuff, man. Juan Manuel Lopez and Wilfredo Vasquez fought each other in 2016, and Lopez was able to come out on top with his beautiful knockout in the 11th round. That one backed him up. Wama's just got to let it go now. Good left hit. Then, right after the knockout, one of Vasquez's cornermen just started shouting things at Lopez, and well, he didn't take the high road and went right back at him. That's it. That's it. Apparently, there was a ton of hate between these two fighters, and they had been brewing for years. Vasquez said before the fight that Lopez repulsed him, and they almost came to blows during the final news conference. I gotta say that that guy held up pretty well and landed some solid shots on Lopez. Of course, he was barehanded, so they did have a little more power to them. In the end, both fighters hugged each other, having earned each other's respect. Norman Stoney Stone was John Ruiz's trainer during his fight against Andrew Galata in 2004 and well let's say that Stoney is a very animated trainer and he started this fight by invading the ring. Not to fight Galata but to go against his trainer. Now here's the first instance and as Sam Colonna, the trainer for Andrew Galata comes into the ring, Norman Stone. Luckily there were no blows thrown but Stoney wouldn't stop cursing at the referee and he eventually got kicked out of the fight in the middle of the 8th round. Fucking jerk off. <laughs> okay, That's up. our Stoney. Really? He's, he's ordering Stone out of the corner. Most experts believe that Galata had won the fight, especially since Reese was down twice in the second round and was deducted a point for a late hit. But somehow the judges gave the fight to Ruiz as he was able to come back in later rounds landing the cleaner shots. Zab Judah and Floyd Mayweather met each other in 2006 and early on it was a great fight with both fighters being somewhat equal in speed and punch accuracy but eventually Mayweather started to take over, especially in the 7th round. Trying to do in the ring. Seven, three rounds apiece. In the 10th round though, Judah started to get dirty and delivered a low blow and also hit the back of Mayweather's head that caused Roger Mayweather, Floyd's trainer, to jump in and confront him. And then all hell broke loose. Oh, there's a low blow by Judah. And Richard Steele pulls Zab Judah off of Floyd Mayweather Jr. And Mayweather is badly hurt by the low blow. And now Roger Mayweather wants to come out. Luckily, Roger wasn't able to get anywhere near Judah, but then Yoel Judah, who was Sab's father, jumped into the ring and threw a punch at Roger. And now Leonard Ellerbe wants Yoel Judah. 
Then all the corner jumped in. Security and police eventually split everyone up and the fight continued with Mayweather cruising to an easy win. The result, Roger Mayweather was ejected from the fight, fined $200,000 and suspended for a year, while Yoel Judah was fined $100,000 and suspended for a year as well. Now we have Galata involved in another crazy fight, this time when he fought against Riddick Bowe for the first time. Galata was outclassing Bowe in this fight, but he kept hitting him below the belt. He hit him a total of six times with this one being the final time. Galata got disqualified, which is really hard for everyone to understand because he was winning, he had been warned multiple times and he even lost points and still he hit him again. Bo's corner was pretty angry so they went after Galata. It's time for someone to understand that you don't have to keep the rules in this business. And now there's a fight in the ring that's been started by some of Bo's handlers who went after Luke Duba. Galata must have been furious since he reacted by throwing two punches as soon as he got pushed, not really even seeing who it was that pushed him. Galata also got hit with a walkie talkie which cut his head. Then his trainer started having chest pains. It turned into a riot when fans from both camps started attacking each other. They had a rematch and Galata once again got disqualified for illegal low blows. This fight happened way back in 1960 between heavyweight Brian London and Dick Richardson. Brian London had lost the fight via technical knockout after he couldn't continue due to a bad cut. London's cut eye was so bad it was announced that he'd retire. Apparently that wasn't his own decision. London was pretty angry since he complained about being headbutted earlier in the fight and the referee didn't do anything about it. Then Richardson's trainers started yelling at London and this turned out to be a really bad time to do that. London had lost his temper completely. It was no longer a private fight. Everybody joined in. London started throwing punches like he was still boxing because those punches looked pretty good. Maybe he should have done that during the actual fight. He then went after Richardson landing a few shots before more people from his corner joined in throwing more blows at everyone who was in that huddle. It was a total free for all. Well there you have it guys, adrenaline is pumping in every person that is near the fight. So sometimes they just want to get involved in the action and other times they want to protect their fighters honor. But there are better ways to do that. Thanks for watching this video, see you next time.